The hippie movement was a big influence in the world, especially in the United States. This card reflects the nobler aspects of it, namely, people's increasing desire for peace. But we're going to take a look at its effect on the Cold War as reflected in Twilight Struggle, here on Legendary Tactics. Flower Power is the card that attempts to encapsulate the influence of the hippie movement on the Cold War. It is an interesting event card in the game, and we will take a closer look at it here. First of all, the event. Flower Power is a 4-op Soviet starred event card. Triggering the event will set in force a condition that continues until the An Evil Empire event cancels it. The USSR will gain two victory points every time the US subsequently plays a war card. The war cards are Arab-Israeli War, Korean War, Brush War, Indo-Pakistani War, or Iran-Iraq War. These victory points are not scored if the card goes to the space race. It's also important to note that if Arab-Israeli War has been cancelled by the Camp David Accords event, it no longer counts as a war card for the purpose of scoring victory points. For the Soviet player, even though this event seems pretty strong on the surface, the four ops are just going to be too tempting and will likely be the path you will take. It's just too hard to tell how many points Flower Power is going to grant you over the course of the game, especially since the US can use the space race to mitigate its effect. The potential beneficial effect can be further reduced by the fact that the Korean War card may have already left the deck. And Camp David Accords cancels the Arab-Israeli War card for the purpose of Flower Power. It's not a bad event by any means, but it's just much better if the US player triggers it for you. Unless you know that the US player has two or three war cards in hand, I would recommend taking the operations points every time instead of the event. Hopefully it turns up later in the American player's hand and the US will play it. If you are considering playing it for the event as a headline or otherwise, make sure that it happens early enough in the game to have an effect. You obviously don't want to play it on turn 7, only to have the US cancel it on turn 8. The only way that this card pays off for you is if it is in effect for the longest possible time. For the US player, for the same reasons mentioned earlier, you will likely be tempted to spend the four ops and just deal with the consequences later. Realistically speaking, those consequences are likely around four victory points, maybe six. Although you will always have the option of sending a war card to space instead of taking the victory point hit. Of course, if you have Flower Power in hand, you will play any war cards that you have before playing it, so as not to give up any unnecessary victory points. And then after that, you will have to evaluate the ops or event provided by your war card and the situation you're dealing with before deciding to play it for ops or on the space race. The only exception to this is the Brush War event, which is likely going to offer up a great target or two that is well worth flipping in exchange for two victory points. It's just too bad that the War cards have an element of chance involved, which makes the decision more difficult. No one likes to get a bad roll and then have to lose two victory points on top of it. It's like rubbing salt in the wound. That said, the biggest risk, quite frankly, is forgetting that Flower Power is still in effect. If it gets played on turn 4 and an evil empire doesn't turn up until turn 10, that's a long time to keep it in your mind as a variable. It's likely that you're going to play a war card and lose two victory points by accident, by simply forgetting that it's in force. Not only that, you can play an evil empire to cancel it, but it is not a great event overall, so it seems a waste to play it just to get rid of the flower power event. It's obviously better to cancel Flower Power with an Evil Empire in, say, turn 8 instead of turn 10, but again, you will need to make that decision based on the board situation and the cards that you have in hand. If you decide to cancel Flower Power with an Evil Empire, at least you get a victory point out of it, even if it comes at the steep, steep opportunity cost of 3 operations points. So, for the Soviet player, this card will generally be played for ops, but you can choose to play this for the event if you're looking to put some gentle pressure on the US and complicate their hand management. For the US player, you will likely need those four ops badly, and you'll have to mitigate the war cards as they turn up. 
You can deal with the event effect, but make those four ops count. This has been our analysis of the flower power event in Twilight Struggle. We hope you found this video helpful and interesting. If you did, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time here on Legendary Tactics.